Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two recent five-star nonfiction reads. The first book I'd like to talk about in this video is Why Fish Don't Exist, a story of love, loss, and the hidden order of life by Lulu Miller. This book was published in 2020 by Simon & Schuster, and the hardcover comes in at 240 pages. This is one of those nonfiction books that's really hard to describe because of how many different things are going on within it. The author is a science reporter for NPR. She's also the co-founder of the radio show slash podcast Invisibilia. One day she stumbled across this story of a taxonomist named David Starr Jordan, who after a devastating earthquake in California, shook up his collection of fish, damaged some, ruined others. He used a very unique method to get things back in order. In the aftermath of this event, which was just one of a sequence of events that attempted to throw a wrench into his plans, he decided that he was not going to be thwarted again. He decided he was going to wrestle control of the chaos, the entropy of the universe, and sew the name tags of specimens directly onto the specimens themselves. She couldn't get the mental image of him sewing name tags onto lifeless fish bodies out of her head, and so she started to research him. She was more and more fascinated by him. And in the early days of her research, he kind of became a beacon of order and control in a very chaotic universe. And given the place that she was at in her life, he kind of became an idol in that way. He was one person who refused to buckle under the pressure of the chaos of the universe. This is what I meant by this book being extremely difficult to categorize, ironically enough, because it is very much a biography of this taxonomist, David Starr Jordan, whose job it was to categorize the natural worlds, or in his case, fish. That was his field of interest. But it's also the story of how our author, in a very tumultuous period in her life, chose to make a role model out of a man whose job it was to fight the world's natural state of disorder. Years before writing this book, Lulu Miller made a choice that she talks about in the book that critically wounded a relationship she was in at the time. But she spent a very long time afterward thinking that things could be made right again, that she could get this relationship back. Her life was very jumbled in the period where she was just really holding on to this idea. And so I think researching this historical figure whose life seemed to contain some answers that she was looking for out of the world gave her a lot of purpose in this period of her life. So this book is the story of her fascination with David Starr Jordan as much as it is a book about David Starr Jordan himself. But that story of her fascination with him definitely has an arc because not everything about the taxonomist was admirable. There's reason to believe through both the records and what Lulu Miller discovered through her research that he may have been responsible for a murder. That's an interesting story. And he was also an unwavering supporter of eugenics and forced sterilization. Miller does not shy away from discussing those beliefs he held within this book. It's not a, well, if you can get over the whole eugenics thing, there was a lot to admire about him. No, she discusses that movement at length. She talks about David Starr Jordan's involvement and promotion of that movement. She uses this as one of several points where she pokes holes in her initial inflated sense of him and what he represents within her life. And by doing this, by going through that process over the course of this book, she's able to put some pieces together regarding her own life in her own view of the world. I was really enjoying this book the whole way through. There was nothing I disliked about it. I was really enjoying the reading experience, but I was pretty convinced that I was going to end up giving it four stars, which is still a good rating. It's just I reserve five star ratings for books that have kind of an inexplicable electricity to them. And this book didn't have that until the very last section. The last full chapter of this book is where everything comes together to deliver that magic. It is the chapter that will make the title of this book make sense. And it really gives you that wow moment, not just in terms of the information, but also with the insights the author is giving us about how we as people classify things and how it can actually narrow our view of the world. She talks about how wrong we are about so many things and how it can restrict us, especially if we choose to cling to things that are just not real. They are created within our heads. 
it was so beautiful and so moving, and it really put the rest of the book into context. I would give you more details about it, but I really don't want to rob you of that moment if you choose to go and read this book. So yes, in the end, this book did end up earning the full five stars from me. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I didn't originally think it would be a book I'd want to go back and reread, but I want to go back and reread it right now. The writing somehow manages to be peppy and energetic even when conveying such big philosophical ideas. You would think something like that would be pretty heavy and hard to read, but no, it is a very light read. So obviously this is one that I highly recommend. I should say if you are interested in picking up this book, the physical copy and also the e-copy have illustrations by Kate Samworth. Or if you like audiobooks, the audiobook is actually narrated by the author herself, which is always nice. I did promise, though, that in this video I would review not just one, but two recent five-star nonfiction reads. The other one is Fathoms, The World and the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. This book was also published in 2020 by Simon & Schuster, which is a coincidence. This video is not sponsored, I should note. The hardcover of this book comes in at a heftier 352 pages. Hefty is probably the right word for this book, too and not just because it's about whales, but because it is chock full of history, information, and ideas. I mean absolutely overflowing. As the title promises, this is indeed a book about a different water-dwelling creature, the whale. The author, who is an Australian writer of both essays and stories, begins this book with her own story of an encounter with a beached humpback whale in her hometown of Perth, Australia. She explains that it was quite the sight, not just the dying whale on the beach, but also the crowds of people coming to gawk at it. This story sets the stage for what she attempts to do throughout the book, which is to draw links between the world of the whale and the human world. This leads her to discuss a great many things, including to start with whaling or hunting whales. At one time, this was a very lucrative industry. She talks about the ways whales benefit their underwater communities, but also the world at large. She talks about how the whales are affected by man-made pollution, whether it be chemical, noise, or otherwise. But she also talks about the relationship between humans and whales and how that has changed over time. She talks about how certain creatures like whales have a charisma to them that makes us want to protect them, but also that makes us want to do things like take selfies with them, how our hunger to touch and possess these creatures can become uncontrollable and extremely destructive. She talks about both our cultural and our potentially innate connections to the natural world, how we very well may be hardwired to see nature and animals in a specific way based on the results of an accidental case study of someone who had brain damage in a specific area of their brain and was no longer able to see things in the natural world the way a normal brain would. But she also talks about our tendency to see whales as mythical creatures, how because they live separate from us in an underwater world, they are somehow more pure. And that is just a tiny, and I mean, a tiny sampling of all the different conversations that she has in this book, I could lay out more of her discussion points and more of the questions that she poses within the book, but we would be here all day and you would have no sense of the winding, wispy nature of the conversations that she's having within the book. This whole book is essentially a long, lyrical contemplation of connection, mainly meaning the physical connection between humans and whales, but also the similarities between the human world and the animal world. And she uses the whale more or less as a sample animal. There are some discussions in this book where you could substitute in a different animal and it would be just as applicable. This is a great nature book in general that I would recommend to everyone, but I would specifically recommend it for lovers of literary fiction. That's what I had on my mind the whole time I was reading this book because the language is stunning. So if you enjoy gorgeous writing, I think you would really love this book she would be really skillfully explaining something and then she would drop a line that would just take my breath away. Even though I loved this book, I gave it five stars. I do feel like I need to mention in this review that it's a little bit on the longer side for a piece of nature nonfiction. In my experience with nature nonfiction, books typically aren't this long unless it's an academic work of some kind. 
This is also not a fast read because there is so much information in here. It will take you a little bit longer to get through. So if you're looking to take this book on, I would set some time aside to dedicate to it. I personally feel that there was so much to this book. There was so much information, so many different conversations that just kind of flowed into one another that I did not pick up everything the first time around. I know I didn't absorb everything I could have from this book with just one reading. I know this is a book I'm going to want to go back and reread because I feel very certain that there will be new things I pick up the second time around, potentially even the third, fourth, fifth time around. So those were two somewhat connected yet still very different from one another recent five-star nonfiction reads. I would love to hear from you if you've read either of these books, if you've heard of either of them, or if you're now interested in reading one or both of them after hearing me speak about them, you can put that or any other more general comments or questions you may have down in the comment section below. Or if you would like to connect with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.